I think we, we blew up too quick. Like the way people outside of the NFT space, how they see NFTs is so bad. NFTs is so much more than just board ape. It's like there's art, there's products, there's uh, tickets, there's going to be medical field. And I think we need to educate people into the difference of NFT project because to me, like a project like board ape is more like a product than an art project, you know? And you see like everything that I'm doing, it's more art than a product. But you see like the Aokiverse, it's not art or it's not a product, it's a tickets for like shows. So I think we we need to educate people into the difference in NFTs because NFT is just, it's just like, it's a buzzword right now and people associate this as one items, you know? Matt, what's good, man? We made it, Sam. We did, we did, we did. What's in store for today? We have got Fuck Render, our first repeat guest on the podcast. We're glad to welcome him back. One of the leading artists in the NFT space, now building a world around his work with Lucidia. Really interesting ecosystem with all these different components where he's really utilizing this technology's potential uh, to create community bonds and utility um, while doing it in a way that feels right to him as an artist. I think that it's a really, he's a really interesting artist to follow in that regard. I'm so excited to dive more into what he's building. How about you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's no stranger to digital art. He's been an artist for 10 years. Um, with the advent of and the kind of the rise in popularity of NFTs, he's very much been at the forefront now is at major auction houses, setting precedent, but also innovating a lot surrounding the different technology, not only with his own personal art and fuck render, but with this whole Lucidia brand and community and set of offerings. So I think it's really exciting to see how he kind of... Uh, dives deeper into a lot of the intentionality as to how he wants to continue driving innovation within the space. So really enjoyed this episode. Grateful that we're able to record live after a great week during NFT NYC here at Spring Studios. Um, definitely a lot. The IRL hits different um, indeed. But without any further ado, let's get into this week's episode. Fuck Render. Fred, fuck Render. Back on the NFT Now podcast. Glad to have you back, man. How's it going? Yeah, thank you so much for having me again. Um, everything's going pretty pretty well. I have a rocky, a rocky voice because I've been screaming for probably five days now. So sorry about that. Well, you have a very good reason to. Uh, you just had three days of Lucidia events at NFT NYC. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, honestly, it went like more like crazier than I expected. Uh, we had so we had Studio Five Twenty Five for three days. We we're supposed to do to do two parties at night, but the first show uh, that we had with Steve Aoki, we had three thousand people trying to get in inside the venue, and it's a three hundred capacity. And the neighborhood didn't really like that, so they shut us down the second night. Um, they were like literally threatening a Gabe from Phantom Lab to like get arrested and shit. So it was it was pretty crazy, but like. Uh, the team flipped this party, the second party, in like an hour 30 and we got to go to House of Yes and we brought everybody there and it was, we still had like so much fun. It was like Toki Monster playing with the Dioli, which is our sound design here, so, which was pretty fucking dope. That's amazing, man. And I'd love to, I mean, last time we had this conversation on the podcast was almost a year ago at this point. And it's been a crazy year. Um, can you just kind of talk us through some of the highlights, the ups, the downs, what it's been like as you've continued to grow within this space? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll start with like the ups because it's been so crazy this year. And like, I feel like it's, it's, it's been as much as it's been fun, it's, it's been the most overwhelming year of my life. Like, it's crazy. And it, it, in, in a good way, though, like, so we like... I, 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 I still do my art career, but I started this, this project called Lucidia, which is a virtual art experience that we're doing now, physical events, we're doing shows. We have a couple of locations that we're gonna do shows around the world, which is gonna be interesting. Gonna have more information about that soon. Uh, but yeah, so doing this, doing like physical art now, and like there's so many stuff that I'm doing and that we're doing with, with the team for Lucidia and stuff. So it's it's been amazing. and. The, the journey of just like growing like Lucidia so far has been so fun. Uh, but I would say like the, 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 the down is like people have so much expectation. Like, like we, 
when we released like the Avatar project, like it was wasn't really in a good market, and like it went crazy down. And it was very hard, honestly, like seeing comments of people being super negative and like like almost like like people were sending death threats sometimes, and I was just like, "Fuck, this is so fucking crazy!" Like I'm like we're like we're not going anywhere. We're still like the market, is, like we cannot control everything, you know. Um, so yeah, it was like challenging to like understand that like just to lay lay back and like keep building and like keep working hard uh, without like getting too impacted by the negativity sometimes from like when markets goes up, people are stoked. When markets goes down, people are mad. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's been it's been fun and challenging, but mostly fun for sure. For sure. Uh, let's dig a little bit more into Lucidia. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a bit more about the vision there. The, you know, like you're, you, there's so many different components to it, you know, from the, the fuck crystals to the, yeah. to the fuck avatars. And I know that that's still just scratching the surface of what you have planned. So, yeah. so tell us a bit more about, about like the full vision of it. Yeah. So Lucidia is like, it's a virtual art experience because my goal, like my, my initial goal where it started, it started when I minted my first piece on Super Rare. Like I'm a digital artist. I do 3D stuff. And I was like, I, I, there's something like my, I want my collectors to have something else than just like a thumbnail on a web page, you know? So I was like, I picked up Unreal Engine for the first time and I created this virtual world for people that, that you, you could download it and like go see my art. And it was, it went like crazy. So the idea was like, I want to give access to artists to be able to create their environment. Doesn't need to be planned, doesn't need to be anything because the goal is to create something that doesn't exist already. So we're, building this platform where uh, people will be able to build their own environment with a very artistic way. So it's very curated. The tools we're, we're building is very like curated and make it simple to use. Uh, so the goal is to have like amazing artists to create their environments, maybe some brands to create their their space with, uh, with GLB integrations where you can put like 3D models. Uh, we're working on making like still images look cool inside that as well uh, but the whole thing is really to bring nfts to another to give another medium of seeing nfts basically um so yeah it's the the reality is like everything takes so much time to do so like people like in the first few months people haven't seen like the, the actual progress because we're actually building something quite huge uh, but now we're starting to see all the, the progress now we have like lucidia is all streamable you can go see it anytime uh, we have like uh, um, events activation every few weeks so it's pretty uh, it's pretty dope yeah no i mean it's really fascinating too just how you've been so intentional at really nurturing a strong community connection and trying to give back and level up your early holders and early collectors um when it when it comes to like when it comes to doing that in the future, what's kind of the timeline and some of the other bigger activations and as you continue to evolve on this project? I know the timeline's in flux, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so right now we we just launched the, the streamable. We're working with you can to do like all the tokenomics and staking. Uh, because as much as like we like we want to make like this tokenomic like token gated virtual ex art experience but we want to have everybody to be able to enjoy lucidia but people that are older that has uh, bigger perks uh like when you go to our physical events you have like uh, free drinks and free stuff and shit like this but we're really trying to like rewards the people that were there the first that's that that's for sure but we also want like everybody to be able to see what we're building because i think it's so fucking cool so yeah, no, I, I think that's really interesting, too. And, you know, one thing that I've always admired about your work is that, like, you really do use this technology to do things that would not be possible in the, the traditional art world, whether it was, you know, burning open editions to to claim fuck crystals or rewarding people who own fuck crystals with fuck avatars, you know, being able to mint. You, you've continued to get bring value kind of back to holders. Um, and, and I think that that's something that, like, you've done really naturally. But I, I think for a lot of artists, it doesn't come that naturally. Um, so I'd love to hear kind of like your thoughts and like how that kind of guides your, your approach, because, um, you know, there's the whole art and utility debate and it feels like you check both the boxes really really easily oh thank you oh yeah. Uh, yeah so like to me like utility is like to me the utility doesn't make any sense like people are expecting so much and like like most of the time i see like 
like people are, are screaming for utilities and you ask them, what do you want? Like, what do you want for utility? And they're not even able to tell you what they want because they don't know what they want. So I think it's interesting. And like, to me, like, I just want to do like interesting and, and, and weird and cool stuff. Like I, I, I don't have any like agenda or any plans when I do like, so like when I do like the burn for the balance, I was like, like these guys supported me. The supply is big. I'm going to reward them with a bigger collection because we have a bigger project coming for Lucidia, which is like, there's a difference between Fuck Render and Lucidia. And like people don't see that difference yet because I've been so on with Lucidia, but in, I think in a couple like months and years, people are going to understand. But so to go, go back with this is like, I, I don't really plan. Like I just like come up with ideas and I, I don't like sit on them. Like I just execute them. So I, I think that's like, that's just the way to go. Like I, I've done stuff that that wasn't the right thing, and like I, I failed many times at like ideas, and I just think you can just. I think people are too scared to fail, so like they 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 re, they retain themselves to just try. Um, but the reality is like we're so early that you have so much room to like experiment and like learn from like mistakes and create something very strong, you know. So, um, but yeah, and like to go back with like utilities. The fuck avatar, we're doing something actually really fucking cool with it uh, recently. And all I can say is like, there's a reason why it's called fuck avatars. So I'm just going to say that. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> Dying to know what that means, man. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's when you know it, like it's pretty straightforward. So. Yeah. Word. Well, um, I'd love to just dive deeper too into like what your creative process is. And I know you mentioned there's a little bit of a delineation between like Lucidia and fuck render. So um, but like, how are you thinking through different ideas? I'm sure there's so many people coming at you wanting to do so many collaborations. So you have to be very kind of thoughtful and selective. Like, how are you creatively approaching each project? Yeah. So like, I see it like in two different things. Like fuck render is like, fuck render is like what I've been doing for almost 10 years now. It's like my art career. And it's, it's, it's something that I always, I'll, I'll always do, you know? Uh, so this is more like my own art, like one-on-ones, like very limited editions, um, like sculptures. Um, I have a solo show in London coming. I, we're not set in stone, but probably in around September. Um, and this is like all fuck render stuff. Um, so, and Lucidia, the difference is, this is a big project that we want to give opportunity to other people, like artists and collectors to create their own virtual environment in a very cool curated way. Uh, but the reality is like I created most of the visual for Lucidia. So it's people are only seeing fuck render in Lucidia, which is totally, totally cool with that. So I, these are, I actually have two very different creative process because fuck render is like all me. There is no one working on anything that I release as fuck render, but everything that is Lucidia, we have a, I, I think we have like 40 people now working on Lucidia, which is pretty crazy. So Wild. like all the environments, all the NFTs, from Lucidia, it's it's a team effort uh, where all the fuck render stuff, it's all just me. Uh, so that's mainly the difference. Uh, wow, that's really impressive. Yeah, you know, it's 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 amazing to think about. You know, just everything that goes into into something like that. And I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts too. You know, you you touched a little bit on it. Um, you know, when you talked about some of the backlash that that you got when when you know the market kind of turned and, and the like. I'm I'm curious, like as an artist, like how do you sort of like you know, stay grounded and stay, you know, sane when, when amid this like insane roller coaster, which can be quite emotional and, and volatile, especially when you have a community based project on your hands, you know? Yeah, you cannot stay sane. <laughs> I like, I'm sorry for everyone. There's no, there's no exit. Like, it's just like, you need to deal with it. And it's, it's just like, it's actually like rougher than I expected. Uh, and I, I do think I'm handling everything really well. But like, some morning I was just like, watching discord and like people are like fudding crazy and i was just like having chest pain i was just in my bed and i was like fuck it's so painful like i like and especially like when it's my art that's being commented directly and like it's something that's like i love to do so much and i understand like lucidia is like like i never had like any problem or any fud with like like the fucker and this stuff but like lucidia since it's a more community based and it's, there's way more people involved like it's easier to get like people that's gonna talk shit. That's for sure. But I don't think there's a, any way to like stay grounded. I, I think it's just like 
you need to deal with it and just like like sometimes just like lay back and just like look at what's everything and like because the reality is like 99% of the people will like it but you're going to focus on the 1% that's going to be giving you shit for everything so i think if you don't focus on that one person it's like it's the best but it's it's nearly impossible easier said than done yeah, right yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but you still have to focus on the 99% per- person with people that actually love and believe in this project you know because these guys are the most important the one person they can i don't like they can fuck off i don't care like the most important is the people that truly believe in the project you know yeah no that's special and um when it comes to like the 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 fud do you feel like the bear market that we're in right now is healthy and productive for the space as a whole right now i've i've never seen so much positivity in like my discord and even twitter it's so f- like everybody's so nice right now and like like we have like people like w- there's one discord manager uh, not discord manager but someone on on our discord that like amazing graphic designer and he started to do like free like banners for people and like he spent like he's he spent like days just to make banners for every olders and like just everybody just get together and like like just seeing people at, at our parties and just during the exhibition during the day and like everybody's just so stoked so i think i kind of like Of course I prefer bull run because we all uh, we all like to be not stressed financially you know uh, but like I think it's it's what's happening right now is amazing because we really get to focus on what we're doing and there's no distraction you know and just people supporting and offering helps which is amazing Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in addition to obviously all of your artistic work and your own NFT projects, I know you're quite active in other NFT communities. You you trade and you trade, you collect, you're 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 active. I'd love to hear just a little bit about like what have been some of your biggest like Ws and what have been some of your biggest Ls. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't I don't like saying these are loss because like these are amazing projects that just went down. Like to me like if like I I bought like five World of Women when they were like 17 28 mm-hmm. and now they're four or five and like but like it, to me it's it's not a L because like I know what it is you know like I know what it is to like see your project go down in value so like I to me as long as like the project and like it, the project has legs and like still grows and still work like it's that, it, that's the only important like I it, of course it's it's always painful to see like like make a verse when I bought like a total peak and like now it's nothing but like at the end of the day like you cannot always win you know so uh so I wouldn't say I have like any favorite win or loss it's just like I'm just like focus on our I on project that I like, I think the the builders are actually doing something for sure 1000% and in the the spirit of building <laughs> building pose we're building today um in the spirit of building what do you think of like When we last spoke on this podcast about a year ago, it's been crazy to see how much the space has evolved. What's kind of surprised you over the course of the year? And then when you look at the next kind of three to five years, how do you think we'll be penetrating and getting even more adoption in other industries? Yeah, I think I think we we blew up too quick. Like I think it's like the way people outside of the NFT space all they see NFTs is so bad. So like we really need to focus on educating people outside of the nft space and like because a lot of people like because there's a difference and i think people associate nfts only with board apes honestly like literally only board apes um which congrats congrats for for them because they 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 blew up you know so but the reality is like nfts is so much more than just board ape it's like there's art and there's products there's Uh, tickets there's going to be medical field and i think we need to educate people into the difference of nft project because to me like a project like board ape is more like a product than a art project you know and you see like everything that i'm doing it's more art than a product but you see like the aoki verse it's not art or it's not a product it's a tickets for like shows so i think we we need to educate people into the difference in nfts because nft is just it's just like it's a buzzword right now and people associate this as one items you know 
I totally agree. You know, I think that we're like, the space is so nascent right now that like, you know, all these different categories are getting lumped together under yeah. one thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and people don't realize that there's different creative and consumer priorities at yeah. play, right? It, it's like comparing like, like you see, like I see this tweet all the time and it, it pissed me off so much. It's like only the top 10 project will survive in, in the next years. And it's so fucking crazy because like the top 10 project is like, it's like putting like all Adidas, Nike, like whatever all these brands against all these amazing artists that are like alone like 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 it doesn't make sense it does like it's crazy to me to say that like artists that are super successful will, won't be there in five years because they're not in top 10 of like like it doesn't make any sense to me like and people have too much expectation of of like va like financial values and it's it doesn't make any sense I don't know if that makes sense what I said, but yeah. No, it does. It does. I mean, I mean, you think about it too. It's like you look at, um, you, like you look at, it's like you never necessarily expect like uh, an artist, you know, to come like be in the same like competition of like as like a, a, a like a wearables company yeah, or exactly. like a fashion company. Yeah. Like you know, it's like these things where it's like oh, you wouldn't necessarily expect a painting to also be a membership pass yeah, or exactly. or a membership pass to look like a painting. Yeah. And like it is amazing that NFTs allow all of these different things to combine. But I think like the issue is that people forget is like you know to to stop projecting the same expectations uh, like on every category. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, and I, I think the main issue is like, I, I, as much as I really love OpenSea and everything, I think OpenSea is not attractive to buy art because you go on the OpenSea and you feel like you're buying a product. And it's, to me, it's like, that's, that's where, like, I, I love Foundation because I think Foundation, you're actually buying some art. Super, it's fine too. Uh, Nifty Gateway is fine, but I think most of the people goes, go on, on, on OpenSea to buy NFTs. But there is a need to be like there should be like a switch on the open sea to like swap the old ui and make it look like a cool art platform you know because that's the difference like when i buy an nft on open i'm not as satisfied as when i buy it on, on foundation example or nft ways i don't know it's probably just an aesthetic concern but yeah no i mean i, I think we'll see too like um I don't think it's going to be a one size fits all approach yeah, for no, these exactly. different marketplaces. And like, you'll, you'll have different verticals and like, you just think about fashion. You have like yeah, yeah, boutiques, yeah. you have exactly. Walmart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like community building, obviously it's one of the most used buzzwords <laughs> in the space, but rightfully so. And yeah, I yeah. think this creates a lot of like viability, economic viability around a thriving community. You built up a really strong community, both personally around like fuck render as well as with Lucidia. Can you just speak a little bit to things you've been really intentional about when it comes to growing and engaging your community? Yeah. I think one thing I do that not a lot of people do in, in every project is I respond to literally everyone. I take time to respond to literally everyone. Like on Twitter, if someone tagged me or something, or like if someone collected my stuff and is stoked, I'll, I'll always reply and I'll always like interact because to me like, it's, I, I worked in a restaurant for so many years and like to run a, a good restaurant and to like when I go to a restaurant and I want to come back, I want to feel like I'm at the right place, you know? And like to me, it's so important because like these like collectors m are allowing me to create like these physical events that I had for the last three days. They're allowing me to do like this virtual experience that I'm doing because I wouldn't be able to do it just myself. So I think a lot of project forgets how important their collectors is ours, and I think that's uh, that 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 has been my my skills like being able to interact and listen to the community and like learn and and take the feedback and constructive criticism of course other other if it's not constructive i I don't give a fuck yeah yeah of course <laughs> no I, I think that's a great point and you know it's, it's interesting too like you know i know that you've you've obviously now because you have the community around there you know you've got um a wider collector base you know <clears throat> yeah. and then you've also got with your one of ones you know some of those like top tier collectors yeah. and the like too um what advice do you have for for artists who are entering the space looking to build their collector base you yeah. know because you've done a really good job of balancing that yeah i think the main thing is be patient um and I like I I have people sometimes like write to me and like people I I don't really know and they're like I haven't sold a piece in in five days NFTs are not made for me like can you buy my piece and I'm like five days 
dude, I have pieces that I haven't been touched for three months. I, that you're not gonna see me like, like it. It doesn't like people are people are trying to sell, like the, again, I, like, like this is exactly again the same. The even artists thinks NFTs are a product now, and they don't see even artists they don't see it as art because they're trying to push and they're trying to sell their and. The difference is like when you sell art, it has to be sold to someone that's gonna have, gonna hold this piece in their art. You know, you cannot just sell to anyone. So that's the difference with like, like I don't, I don't care if my pieces don't sell for three months. I'd rather have these pieces to sell to someone that actually will keep it forever. You know, especially like, like one one in limited editions. Um, of course, open edition like sell to everyone. That's fine. Um, but yeah, like it gets interesting too when more and more people own NFTs and the mechanisms of showcasing your collection, both online and off, gets enhanced a lot. I know a lot of times people speak around the notion of identity. Um, and I, I do love the, I mean, just to go back to another like fashion analogy, it's like people spend so much time in self expression through fashion. Now it's that self expression through collecting. And I think that once that becomes a more social experience, like more and more people will be more and more intrigued to express themselves through collecting art. Um, when you think about how do you feel displaying NFTs, I know you spoke about some stuff you're working on with your projects, but like whether it's IRL, URL, how do you think that will evolve in the coming years? Yeah, actually that's a, that, that's a really good one. Like I think screens are fucking shit. Yeah. I hate, <laughs> I hate, it's, I'm sorry, but I hate seeing like NFTs on screen with like the big black bars and yeah. the big, the big black bars or white bars or whatever. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm really, excited to see like product like atomic form to do like one like square like one by one and four by five i think this is going to be interesting because right now it's like all nine by 16 and it's hard, it's really hard to make a good looking piece into that format that, me for me personally so like so when i see screen when i say screens it's like tv screens i'm i don't i think screens are going to be pretty big in the future i think um the 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 identity is important because like right now we're just like buying everything like literally we're, we 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 don't cur like a lot of people don't curate what they buy and i think it's it's important to like have some sort of curation when you buy nfts because it it tells people what you, what who you are basically you know yeah i think it's a great point you know obviously you're building a world with lucidia so i'm curious just to hear how are you thinking about how that exists in the metaverse yeah, so to, like for us, like it's gonna be multiplayer. Uh, but the goal is like we're not a game, we're not very a metaverse or anything. We're a virtual art experience. It's like a virtual museum. That's really what we're trying to do. Is like we're trying to make a space that you can just come and get lost, and it's in a very meditative way. But to to see NFTs. Um, so yeah, we're just like experimenting and we want to have like other artists we have a, a pretty big lineup of upcoming artists that that, that are going to create their own world and environment which is going to be really really cool to see it evolve in the next few months um and we're making like sp special areas where uh so right now we have like the, the main galaxy and we're making collectors work to build a new galaxy so what we're doing is we're creating a staking mechanism where people can stake their avatars and, and crystals and they're going to get resources, NFTs, that are going to be ERC-1155. And with, with these resources, you'll be able to build stars and you're, you're going to be able to put your name forever inside Lucidia, which is, I think it's pretty cool. Like, you're gonna, like we're going to make people build like the, the old solar system of Lucidia. And once we reach uh, X amount of stars, a new galaxy only for token holders will be able to go there and see like arts from like Victor Mascara and other artists like this. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be pretty interesting and cool. I think uh, it's like a social experiment that we're trying to get people together to build the new era of what Lucidia will be. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. Big shouts to Victor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's here with us in spirit right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love Victor. When it comes to just like broader metaverse adoption like how do you think people will be using a metaverse three five years from now 
I do see like people coming in like virtual store to buy. Like I think I think the way we buy on online stuff is going to be so different in five ten years, um, and I do think it's cool to have like a like a hub where you can like physically go see people and like go to like the Louis Vuitton shop and like just buy some stuff and like like buy a piece that you're gonna receive in like two weeks or one week and it's but you you get the NFTs right now. Um, I don't know how we're gonna be able to keep track of like like and tr transferring uh, ownership of NFTs. When you, example, if I buy this sweater, if I don't, this I, I totally don't get it right now. But I think it's gonna get interesting uh, the way we we shop online. I think that's that's really where metaverse will have their success is like online shopping. Well, look, as we kind of move things towards a close, I'd I'd love to just hear also about are there any other upcoming projects, things that, that you have in the works that that uh, we should be aware of and that our listeners should uh, keep an eye out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for Lucidia, we're doing. Uh, a new challenge. We did like a challenge for Curiosity Stone, uh, where people were like solving uh, some like some uh, quest inside not not quest but like some challenges uh, inside Lucidia, and they, they they would get like a free NFT, which is pretty sick. And the NFT actually looked really sick. Uh, so we're doing this inside Lucidia. We have multiplayer coming. Uh, we have uh, a world builder coming. We have the stars coming for people to get together and build Lucidia. Um, and for this, this is pretty much it. We have the staking coming and everything. There's so much coming, but I, I'm very limited because my partners will kill me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we have this. For me, my art career, I'm, I'm, I'm doing more physicals now. Um, I, have, I have 13 sculptures uh, coming um, that are going to be displayed in um, hotels, which is going to be pretty, pretty safe, very high-end hotels. So it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, we, so I have this. I have a solo show um, in London coming. Uh, with I don't know if you guys saw the pieces I did called pearlescent acid. It's like a, yeah, like like mushroom that are like white and like pearlescent. So I'm do I have like I, I I think I have like ten pieces. I'm gonna do a physical a, like a big like flower in 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 a pearlescent material uh, that's gonna be sold there. Uh, so I have this. I'm doing a very fucking crazy collaboration right now that I cannot tell. But in the next like two three months, it's, we're probably gonna be able to talk about it. But it's uh, you know who to call when that's I right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you guys are gonna be excited for this one. It's uh, it's actually pretty huge. Like I just talking about it right now, I have like shivers and like uh, butterfly inside me. It's like I'm getting it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what it is. is there yeah. a teaser? A hint? I no, no it's yep. it, okay. it, yeah, I can't say anything. Like it's cool. too it's too crazy. So yeah, I don't yeah. want like yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but. I'll tell you later yeah, when you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fan theories are going to start in the, the YouTube comments. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, no, <laughs> and I swear it's going to be, I'm, I'm it's going to be pretty huge, I think. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, so I have this. Um, I have the Christie's right now uh, with maps for uh, psychedelic research, which is um, an amazing, uh, amazing uh, donation. Um, and I have another uh, Christ, uh, Christie's uh, with trespassing, uh, called trespassing. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's so many, so much stuff. We're doing like, oh, actually, we're doing uh, world tours of the Lucidia event that we did uh, in New York. Uh, it, it was such a success that we got five venues around the world locked in already um, to do like a Lucidia in real life event. So we're gonna do that. That's sick, man. We'll keep up all the great work, man. Yeah, it's thank you. Crazy to see, uh, amazing to see you continue to trailblaze. You've been creating art for a long time, and it's it's amazing the the traction and momentum you have, man, and all the creativity. So keep it up, bro. Yeah, thank you so much. I yeah, I man. fucking love you guys, and you guys are totally killing the space. So like, you're re really killing it. I, thank you, man. I think you guys are that. so important. So the feeling is mutual, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. Indeed. All right, group hug. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. Peace, bro. Oh, thank you, guys. Man, well, that was an incredible episode. I know. I think we're all uh, been a long week, to say the least. <laughs> that's a that's an understatement. Yeah, no. <laughs> NFT NYC has been fun. There's tons of events, tons of great communities, many of which 
uh, fuck renders through. I think some Lucidia definitely had some some great events this week. Um, what stood out to you in this episode? Yeah, I just love to get more of an understanding of what Lucidia is, what the vision is. You know, hearing him break it down and talking about um, you know being able to build stars and like bring together these different resources and interesting components. Like he's he's just thinking about things in a very very large and intentional and ambitious way, and I think it's a really good thing for the space. I also loved his take on the bear market and and how it actually has quite a silver lining um, when it comes to builders and building. And, um, you know, I just think I think he's a really important part of this community. And it was really good to get his perspective. Yeah, 1000%. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll be back next week.